diagnostic assessments have helped my teaching by um, really letting me focus in on the specific needs of my of each small reading group and I'm able to meet them where they are with the skills they already have solid and mastered and um, start building where they have gaps. And for me the diagnostic assessments really help me focus on what the skill that they are lacking. Is it fluency? Is it phonics? Is it one syllable words? Is it two syllable words? Is it suffixes or prefixes? Is it vocabulary? Um, and then you can really hone on on that skill, um, encoding, decoding, um, because some students are better at one or the other or may need more support in one or the other. If you get stuck, I will tell you the word so you can keep reading. When I say stop, I may ask you to tell me about what you read, so do your best reading. You're going to start here and you're going to go across the page. You ready? Yes. You may begin. Jack and his sister were an example of how the diagnostic assessments help direct and lead my teaching is um, if they have trouble decoding words rather than reading whole words um, or spelling as opposed to reading. Um, so I can really focus on that skill and not just we're working on fluency or working on comprehension. Using the, the data and the notes from the data helps us to see um, which area they're really truly struggling in so I can focus my instruction specifically on that weakness. Can you say this one one more time for me? Pad. There you go. Good job. Okay, I'm going to turn the page. Now this is a page of real words and they have consonant blends and digraphs. Can you start right here and go down? Blip. Um, an example in the group um, that we may see in the data is how they are mastering the real words and may not be mastering the nonsense words, which can tell me that they may be a whole word reader and may not have a strong foundation in those phonics skills. So we can really dive in and explicitly teach those phonics skills when reading and writing.